From Hollywood, the George Burns and Gracie Allen Show for Hormel and Spam. Crazy people. Spam, rip up, boom, spam. George Burns and Gracie Allen on the show when his orchestra low for singing glee with a smoothie sweet. Last but not least, and with Bud he sings. <laughs> It's time for Burns and Allen at your house. And looky, here's an answer to the question, how do you cook an egg? With Spam. Just open a can of Spam, slice and fry quickly in a hot pan, and serve with egg sunny side up. Those juicy, golden brown, sizzling hot slices of fried Spam make an egg taste better than ever. Try Spam and eggs for breakfast. Then try the other recipes on the label and discover that cold or hot, Spam hits the spot. <laughs> And here they are, the stars of our Spam family, George and Gracie. Thank you, thank you very much. Oh, but wait, George. I saw you and Gracie at the El Capitan Theater last week in Charlo's Review, and you're really swell. Thanks, bud. And Gracie, wasn't Jack Benny a wonderful master of ceremonies? Yes. He's certainly smart looking on the stage. Well, of course, gray hair makes a man look distinguished. Yeah. Of course, he's a little more distinguished looking in the back, though, than he is in the front, isn't he? <laughs> yeah, she's kind of losing it a little bit. Yeah. Well, anyway, Gracie, I was on the stage with you. How did I look? When do you mean? When I was telling all those jokes. Oh. Well, you must have looked all right. Nobody laughed at you. <laughs> Of course, I may not be as handsome as Jack Benny. I say I may not be as handsome as Jack Benny. Well, George, who's arguing with you? That's what I get for letting that makeup man put on my lips with a hairbrush. But, well, George, I thought your makeup looked swell. And the show was great, but I was disappointed in one little thing. What was that, bud? Well, I can't understand how you could come out on the stage time and time again and not once mention spam. But, bud, it was impossible. You see, I wasn't on the radio. I was on the stage. Well, I could understand you're not mentioning something like Chlorfmeyer's acidophilus milk, but spam is just a small word. Look, spam. See, did that take long? Well, I'm sorry, bud, but I, I, I just couldn't mention it. Well, you should have. Well, anyway, Gracie... What's more, your makeup looked atrocious. <laughs> now he's mad. How do you like that, bud? And, and just a moment ago, he complimented me. Ah, uh, don't believe his compliments about your makeup. Underneath that, there's something very peculiar. <laughs> Look, Gracie, I just assume you're on Bud's side. Well, George, I think you like this. I heard one of the chorus girls backstage say that you look just like that great movie actor, you really? know. one of the chorus girls? You know, that? what's his name now? You know, the fellow who runs after all the women. Oh, uh, oh, March. That's it, March. Frederick March? No, Harpo. <laughs> Hop o March One of the March brothers Yes Gracie, how can you figure out so many wrong answers to so many right questions? I stay up late You know, someday I'll figure out something that you won't have a silly answer to Then what do you do? Say, what do we both do? <laughs> oh, by the way, Gracie, I saw George in the theater yesterday, but he didn't see me Yeah, I know, he told me <laughs> Well, I did not. And by the way, Artie, how did you like me? Oh, you were swell, Pootsie. Especially with those Dolores Del Rio lips. Well, never mind how I look. How did I sound? How did you sound? George, I'd like to say right here and now that you gave the finest performance I ever saw. Really, Artie? Yep, I'd like to say it, but I can't. <laughs> well, from you, that's practically a compliment. I'll leave it to Gracie. Gracie, who is the nicest among the men? Me. <laughs> I meant among the men. Well, that's where I was. 
Well, you see, how is it that other people can have a simple conversation without making it that simple? Oh. You could have at least mentioned it during the intermission. Mention what? Spam. Oh, we're back to that again, are we? All I did was go on the stage one week and look at what's happened. Yo también fui ahí a la función al Capitán Teatro. Estaba muy bonito. Me gustó mucho como actuaste tú allá en el asunto. Muy bonito. What is it, Senor Lee? Uh, Senor Burns, I saw you on the stage and you were very witty. You made some very flop remarks. It isn't flop. It's flip. Uh, flop. Flip. Flop. Flip. What are we, acrobats? <laughs> Oh, quiet. Well, Artie, what are you going to play tonight? Stardust. You know, Artie, I love to listen to you play. I think you're the greatest clarinet player in the world. Oh, I'd give anything if I could play that instrument. Is it hard? No, nothing to it, Gracie. Here, I'll show you. You pucker up your lips like this. Yeah. The upper lip and the lower lip. Yeah. Then you bring both lips together until your mouth is puckered like this. See? Oh. <laughs> Oh, that, that's wonderful, Artie, but why waste it on a clarinet? Well, Artie, what do you think of my voice? Bum, 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 bum. <laughs> Jealous, that's all. Just Not a bad George, voice myself. George, you know that beautiful white dress I wore on the stage last week? At the El Capitan? Yes. yes. Well, I got some brown makeup on the collar and it worried me so... Well, I wouldn't worry about it. It's bound to come off. Was it Max Factors? No, Charles Boyer's. <laughs> How did Charles Boyer's makeup happen to get on your color? Well, Herbert Marshall was busy. <laughs> See what you mean. Well, all you had to do was send the dress to the cleaners. Oh, room. not me. I'm too smart for that. Mm. I-, I went out and bought ten cents worth of gasoline to clean my dress, and wait till you see it. It's beautiful. The dress or the gasoline? The car I bought. It's long you, and uh, streamlined. You, you bought a car? Well, I had to have something to take the gasoline home in. <laughs> so, uh, you bought a new car. You could have taken it home in an old can, you know. Yeah, but I didn't know where you had it parked. <laughs> well, my car doesn't happen to be an old can. I want you to know it's streamlined. It has chrome wheels. Chrome radiator? Chrome bumpers? That's right, George. I saw it, and it's plenty chromey. <laughs> well, I like it. At least you could have mentioned it during Jack Benny's violin solo. Enough of that. No matter what I say or do, I get into hot water. Oh, I was in hot water last night. What happened? Nothing. I was just taking a bath. <laughs> well, congratulations, and let's talk about something else. All right, let's talk about my dress. You know that beautiful white dress? Gracie, I got the Gracie, makeup. you've already told me about that dress, and let's forget the dress. I never liked that dress anyway. Skippy likes it. <laughs> Skippy? Who's Skippy? Oh, he's the man who's been driving me home from the theater. I met him at the Coconut Grove next week. <laughs> next week? Oh, pardon me, I'm ahead of my story. Oh. You mean last week? Yes. Well, how did you meet him? Well, I was at the Coconut Grove, and he was sitting at a table all by himself, and I walked by and got my handkerchief, and... He heard it fall and said, how do you? Well, and I said, how do you? Just a second. How can anybody hear a handkerchief fall? I had it wrapped around the glass. <laughs> well, uh, didn't that break the glass? No, but it broke the ice, if you know what I mean. I think I know what you mean. Yes. Well, anyway, the music started to play, and he said, do you like La Conga? And I said, well... Anything you're eating is good enough for me. <laughs> so he ordered some Lakanga and we sat and ate. That sounds like a very smart kid. Ordering a dish of Lakanga, huh? Oh, well, what's wrong with that? There's an R in this month. <laughs> well, I forgot about that. Oh, that reminds me, Judge. I- I've got to call Skippy on the phone and tell him I'll be a little late picking him up. You see, I'm having a few minor changes made on my new car. Oh, you're making a few changes? Yes. I put the headlights in the rumble seat, and then I put the radiator where the taillight was, smart, yes. and I, I put the motor where the gas tank used to be, and the steering wheel is right over the license plate, Gracie, and then I'm... Gracie, Gracie, look. What did you do all those things for? Well, in case some crazy dope asks me if I got a car like that, I got one. <laughs> Well, for a minute, I didn't think you had a reason. Well, George, I'll see you later. I've got to go out and call Skippy. Mm. So, see, what's his number? Oh, oh yes. Gladstone 1131. Windshield wiper on the inside. 
George, yes. George, maybe she's overworked. Maybe she's suffering from a pancreatic ganglia of the hypocattle of the cerebellum. <laughs> Yeah. Now, Artie, what does that mean? Well, what am I, a quiz kid? <laughs> Artie, this is, uh, this is nothing to kid about. I'm worried about Gracie. I wonder what could have happened to her. Uh, perdóname un momento. Señor Burns, in Hollywood, anything can happen. I once walked down Hollywood Boulevard, and something bit me, and for five days, I was in a coma. <laughs> it's not coma, it's coma. A comma is a little thing with a tail. That's what beat me. <laughs> well, it's too bad you recovered. <laughs> Still can't figure this thing out. I can. It's very simple, George. Really, bud? Sure, you could have mentioned it during the overture. <laughs> All right, so I didn't mention Spam. Here's a whip. Beat me, beat me. Daddy, ate to the bar. <laughs> Oh, quiet. Look, I've got to do something to help Gracie. Well, Skippy wasn't in, but I told the operator to keep trying and call me back here. Well, look, Gracie, just take it easy. There's nothing to worry about. Nothing to worry about? There's plenty to worry about. That Skippy is kind of crazy. He does crazy things. He does crazy mm -hmm. things? What kind of a fella is the Skippy? Well, he's a short, thin fellow, and he weighs 250 pounds. <laughs> If he's short and thin, how can he weigh 250 pounds? I told you he was crazy. <laughs> Look, Artie, we've just got to do something. Oh, that must be Skippy. Hello? Sorry, Gladstone 1131 is still busy. Well, keep trying it, please. Well, now, don't worry, Gracie. Everything will be all right. Oh, just relax. I just hope so, because Skippy is so much fun. The other day, we went down to the beach, and we threw pebbles in the water and gathered seashells in his toupee. <laughs> Gathered seashells in his two pants? Yes. But Skippy must have a great head. Sure, that's where he shines. <laughs> oh, well, well, let's forget Skippy. Oh, oh, oh I must tell you this. Then they forgot everything. <laughs> He's really a card. While we were down at the beach, he buried his head in the sand, and I laughed and laughed and laughed for hours. He buried his head in the sand? Yes. Well, what's so funny about that? Well, two hours later, when I left him, he was still looking for it. <laughs> Now the smoothies, Bab, Charlie, and Little will sing Rhythm on the River. Sing it. When you hear a real hip cat, take a chorus in B flat. It's the rhythm on the river. You know what that means. He comes from New Orleans. When you hear a drummer ride, and a rip shot breaks the high. It's the rhythm on the river. Can't mistake that beat. He comes from Dayton Street. How do you like Bugle Call Rag? Play as a waltz or a Dixie and Shag. I'll pick the words out of your mouth. Play the same as the sound in New York or any town. When a band swings out or down, it's the rhythm on the river, not the Hudson Bud. Just Mississippi mud. When those jamming kids take off the skits, it's killer. Ho, oh, oh, ho, the rock and roll rhythm's in their soul. From gay Broadway to Mexico. Feel the beat of the rhythm of the rhythm of the river. When the cats give out, it makes you quiver. Hep, hep, we feel it. Let's give we the rhythm. Hep, hep, the song. Let's ride along with them. Say their shade. I saw you in the groove. I dig you, Jack, and then I'm ready, too. When you hear the drummer start to rise. And the rim shot breaks the high. It's the rhythm on the river. Can't mistake that beat. Because of Basin Street. How do you like? You will call rag. How do you like? Dixie Land Shag. Play the swamp. No mean drag. Play the same as the South. In New York or any town. When the band swings down low down. It's the rhythm on the river. Not the Hudson Bud. It's cheap to be to be on the Mississippi mud. It's cheap to be to be on the Mississippi mud. Hear that shuffle, hear that shuffle. Rhythm on the river. Ah, oh, George, you do 
just have to meet Skippy. Well, I'll be glad to, Gracie, but some other time. Well, just you should have been at the beach with us yesterday. We swam all afternoon and we only moved four feet. You only moved four feet? That's all the feet we had. <laughs> Well, I don't know. I've been with you for years, but this is the first time you've really got me worried. Uh, Mr. Burns, I know I'm only the sound man, but I think I may be able to help you solve Miss Allen's problem with a scientific test. For years at Harvard, I studied psychiatry under that famous mind specialist, Professor Alvin W. Thorndike. Thorndike? A-B-B-S-M-A-P-H-D. Well, that's not a funny way to spell Thorndike. <laughs> Gracie, he's using pig Latin. Oh. Look... Sound man, try your test on Bud and show Gracie what you mean. Don't talk to me. I'm mad at you. Now, please, Bud. Well, Mr. Heaston, I'd like to give you a simple test. This is called the Free Association of Ideas. Now, when I say cold, what do you unconsciously think of? Uh, hot. That's right. Now, what made you think of that? Spam. Spam? Yes, because cold or hot, it hits the spot. See, George, how easy it is to get in? <laughs> But, but it fits here. Besides, you've had more experience than I have. This is your 269th broadcast for Spam. 269th broadcast for Spam? That's right. So that's why you feel so chipper, Bud. Sure, Gracie. You see, when I started, very few people knew about Spam. Hormel had found a new combination of meats, a more delicious way to season it, and a handier package to put it in. Spam was something new and different. Nobody else had ever even tried to make anything like Spam. And now there are more than 60 imitations of it. Oh, so that's what makes you feel good. You like imitations. Oh, no, Gracie, it, it hurts me when I see an imitation. When you have more than 60 imitations, you know there must be all sorts of products and all sorts of prices among them. I'm afraid somebody will be fooled. Oh, I get it. You feel good tonight because you like to see people get fooled. Oh, no, Gracie, I feel good tonight because apparently people aren't letting themselves be fooled. I just found out today that in the last six months, the housewives of America bought more Spam than they did all the other 60 brands combined. And that proved women aren't being fooled by low prices, special premiums, or by packages that look a good deal like Spam, or by names that seem like Spam. I feel good tonight, Gracie, because now I know women can really tell the difference. Oh, and you feel good, too, because we're going to let you tell us. What is the difference? Well, Gracie, when Spam first came out, people hadn't learned whether it was beef or pork or cheese or fish, so we labeled it all pork product. When someone else came out with some other product and called it all pork, too, we began to realize that all pork takes in a lot of territory and that we could make a lot cheaper product if we used just any kind of pork. Spam, Gracie, is a combination of pork shoulder meat and ham meat. Nothing else but those two. We use pork shoulder to make Spam a sweet and juicy meat. Then we put in the ham it takes to give it extra flavor and goodness that wouldn't be there without it. That is different than being just all pork. Spam shows on the label this sentence, pork shoulder meat with ham meat added. Look for it. Whenever the occasion calls for a delicious meat at your house, ask your food dealer for Spam. S-P-A-M. Slice it, dice it, fry it, bake it, cold or hot, Spam hits the spot. Oh, Gracie, will you come here a minute? Look, this is what the sound man means. If he says black, you say white. If he says Edison, you say electricity. Uh -huh. Now we'll start again. Go ahead, sound man. <clears throat> Power. Tyrone. <laughs> no, no, Gracie, that's wrong again. Miss Allen, I'm merely trying to find out your mental capacity. Well, it isn't very much. I only drink to be sociable. <laughs> In order to reach a solution for your present dilemma, we must first go back to your childhood. Oh, that'll be fun. I haven't been back there for years. <laughs> Look, Gracie, what he means is, did anything strange happen to you when you were very young? Yes. What? I was born. <laughs> I know you were born. Mm, now, let's see. When was I born? It was, uh, it was Tuesday. No, it was... Thursday. No. no, maybe it was Wednesday. It couldn't be Friday. No, no, I'm never home on Friday. <laughs> Sound man, are you sure those questions are right? You'd never know from the answers. Mm. <laughs> well, this is all beyond me. I wonder what could have happened to her. Uh, Senor Burns, maybe when she was a baby, she climbed on top of the house and fell off the reef. <laughs> it isn't reef, it's roof. Reef. Roof. Reef. Roof, roof, roof. Look, an Airedale. <laughs> Go ahead, Mr. Salman. Continue with your test. Mr. Burns, it's hopeless for me to try and continue this test alone. 
Perhaps Professor Thorndyke can give me some advice as to a different method of questioning. I shall go out and phone him. Well, this has really got me upset. Chrissy, how can you be so rattle-brained? Well, I don't know. I guess I'm just smart. <laughs> Look, this is really beginning to get me. I've been with you for years. Every year you get sillier and sillier. Why I stick by you, I can't understand. And what do I get out of it? A fortune. <laughs> I do not. Besides, Gracie gets half of all the money we make. Don't you, Gracie? Twenty-five dollars every week. <laughs> well, I'm saving the rest for a rainy day. Oh, so that's why you came to California. <laughs> Well, go. Your line is over. Oh, that's Skippy. Quiet, everybody, now. Hello? Gladstone 1131 is still busy. Well, call me the minute they're through, operator. <clears throat> Can't imagine why Skippy is talking so long. Maybe it's hard for him to hang up, huh? On account of the phone is under the bed. His phone is under the bed? Yes. Well, you see, it's a Murphy bed, and he doesn't want Murphy to hear his conversation. <laughs> Look, Gracie, instead of spending all your Mr. time... Mr. Burns, I have wonderful news. I spoke to Professor Thorndike, and he was so interested in the case that he's coming right over here. I guess that's quite an honor, isn't what it? What an honor. You see, he'll watch Miss Allen's mind and see what makes it tick. But suppose it doesn't tick? No ticky, no watchy. <laughs> I hope Thorndike gets here before it's too late. <gasps> oh, that must be Skippy. Hello? Gladstone 1131 is still busy. Well, keep trying, please. Gracie, will you stop with those silly phone calls? Imagine why Skippy's line is so busy. That's his private number, too. Oh, there's Professor Thorndike now. Mr. Burns, would you mind opening the door? <laughs> Me open the door? But you're the sound man. Please, Mr. Burns, just this once. Professor Thorndike must never know that I, the winner of the Harvard Scientific Research Scholarship, do that for a living. <laughs> well, all right. Come in. Good evening, Elliot, my boy. Good evening. Folks, this is Professor Thorndike, the famous psychiatrist. Oh, glad to meet you, Professor. Pull up a brain and sit down. <laughs> quiet, quiet. Say, Professor, you're pretty. <clears throat> you, uh, you like men, I gather. No, I like men, I gather. <laughs> So this is the patient. You guessed it. Professor, you see, she has strange mental quirks. Uh, Miss Allen, do you have any inhibitions, phobias, or fixations? No, but I can let you have a chance to feel. <laughs> well, Professor, how have you been? Miss Allen, do you sleep well? Well, no, no. Last night I couldn't sleep at all. All night long there was a fly on my nose. Why didn't you brush the fly off? Well, what for? It wasn't dusty. <laughs> This is the strangest case I've ever seen. There's only one man in this country who can cope with this case. And uh, who, who who do you mean, Professor? I mean Dr. Hugo Friedlander, the world-famous psychologist. Not the Dr. Friedlander who was honored by the Medical Society last week. Yes, yes, he's the only one who can help us. I'll call him immediately. Operator. Operator. Get me Gladstone 1131. Oh, that's Skippy. Well, tell him to bring his toupee and we'll gather some more seashells. Well, that's all I want. Folks, give your family Spam and eggs for breakfast Fry slices of Spam quickly in a hot pan And serve with eggs sunny side up The meaty flavor, the grand taste Of juicy, tender fried Spam Makes a hit with everybody Try it tomorrow Ask your food dealer for the original, the one and only Spam, the meat of many uses that outsells all the other 50 brands combined. Thank you, bud. Well, Gracie, say goodnight. Oh, goodnight. Say, George, I didn't know Skippy was such a great scientist. Well, sure. He once wrote a 50,000-word article on a man's spinal column. Really? How did he get it in a typewriter? Good night, folks. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> Friends.
friends, we want to take this moment to remind you that in all parts of the country, community fund campaigns are underway, a most worthwhile cause, and one of the ways we can show that we are grateful Americans. Give, give generously to your local community chest. Join us again next week, same time, same station, for another Burns and Allen show brought to you by Hormel and Spam. Have you tried Hormel Chili Con Carne? You may think you don't like chili, but Chili Con Carne, the way Hormel makes it, is different, and everybody likes it. Double your money back if you don't like it. Try Hormel Chili Con Carne tomorrow. This is the National Broadcasting Company. Oh.